Welcome to the online worship service of Clarendon United Methodist Church. We're so happy you joined us today. You will find a link to the order of worship on the online worship page of our website, www.clarendonumc.org slash worship. There you will also find a way to give your offering online, www.clarendonumc.org slash give. We thank you so much for your support of the vital work of the church in this time of need. Now, let us join our hearts in worship. Welcome, friends, as we gather for worship in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a joy to be with you today, and a special joy to welcome any of you who are visiting with us for the first time. We're starting a new worship series this week called Sources of Strength, as we turn to God who is our help and assurance in times of need. God's power is at work in our midst. Let us open our hearts to the movement of God who is our strength and our song. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge.
Let us pray. Holy God, open unto me light for my darkness, courage for my fear, and hope for my despair. Loving God, open unto me wisdom for my confusion, forgiveness for my sins, and love for my hate. God of peace, open unto me peace for my turmoil, joy for my sorrow, strength for my weakness. Generous God, open my heart to receive all of your gifts. Amen. A reading from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Lord, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being and power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now more than ever, we live in a world that relies on digital connection. On any given day, you could move from checking your email first thing in the morning, to FaceTiming grandma with the kids over lunch, zooming through work, and maybe watching a movie on cable before bed. My family lives in the church parsonage that was built in the 1920s. We love that house. But the plaster walls of that era make the house amazingly resistant to Wi-Fi, which has been a bit of a challenge in recent months as the whole world has moved online. But this week, our church property chair, Baron Collier, has worked his magic and run Ethernet cables all through the house to wire our computers directly to the Internet. And voila, the parsonage has entered the digital age. That direct connection to the computer is going to make such a difference in my life. Now, an Ethernet cable isn't an electrical connection but it gives you a certain kind of power nonetheless. That power now moving through the walls of our house is the power of connection, communication, relationship. It kind of makes me think of prayer, that connection to God that doesn't get blocked by having to move through plaster walls. It's a connection that's hardwired into us, given to us within by our Creator. Prayer is a power that comes straight from its source, and nothing can weaken it. Prayer is a key source of our own power as people of faith in Jesus Christ. Our scripture lesson today is basically a prayer. A prayer for us from the Apostle Paul, who asks God that we might be strengthened within, in our inner being, with power through God's Spirit. He prays that Christ might dwell in our hearts and that we might be rooted and grounded in love. This is the first Sunday of our new worship series called Sources of Strength, and Paul's prayer for us certainly does a good job of introducing this theme. Paul seems to know that we need to be strengthened, empowered, in order to move well through our lives as Christians. It's not all up to us. We don't have to supply all of our own power. God helps us in our walk of faith by pouring power into us, strengthening us, as Paul says, in our inner being. 
Now, it's not electricity, of course. It's a whole different kind of power. It's the power of being rooted and grounded in love. It's the power, as Paul goes on, to comprehend that which is beyond all knowledge, to know the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ that fills us with all the fullness of God. Wow, that's a pretty tall order. To know that which is beyond all knowledge, to go to all the extremes, the soaring heights and the unfathomable depths in order to be completely filled with what he calls the fullness of God. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, talked about this verse nearly 300 years ago. He said that the love of Christ is so wide that it embraces all. It's so long that it lasts forever. It's so deep that it cannot be fathomed by any creature. And it's so high that it can't be reached and snatched away by any enemy. Wesley talks about the fullness of God, that it is all of God's light, love, wisdom, holiness, power, and glory. Perfection, he says, far beyond a bare freedom from sin. That is what Paul is praying for. That is what God is offering to us. All of God's light, love, wisdom, holiness, power, and glory. Again, wow. In our congregation, we have summed up what we understand to be God's mission for us in two words, you know them by now, living love. We then broaden it out a bit by saying, living love by embracing all, sharing Christ, and serving others. It's the living love of Jesus Christ that empowers us as the people of God. And we understand that we don't have to come up with that love all on our own. God offers us that love, that power to move forward on the Christian journey. In times like these, hard times for us and for all people, it's so important to know that God is reaching out to us with power to meet just such a time as this in our lives. We don't have to go it alone. I like the brief story I heard from the Reverend Dr. Sally Brown, who's a professor at Princeton Theological Seminary. It's not a complicated message from an Ivy League professor about some hard to understand theological concept. Instead, it's an image straight out of her childhood. She writes, I remember as a child tiptoeing past the living room where my parents, faithful in morning devotions, were praying. Sometimes I heard them praying for my older brother and me. It can be faintly embarrassing to eavesdrop on prayer, a little like listening in on someone's personal phone conversation, but prayer on our behalf can be a revelation about ourselves and about God. Hearing my parents' prayers, I learned that to them, the two of us were a sacred trust worth praying for. The simple fact of their daily praying let me know that they recognized their limits as parents. There was so much that they could not do for us, so much from which they could not shield us. Their praying also told me what they believed about God. They believed that they could entrust us to hands stronger than their own, a love wiser than their own. It's true. We can entrust our loved ones and even ourselves to hands stronger than our own, a love that is wiser than our own. Even in these stressful days when we are called, to, called on to juggle far too many demands and we suddenly become our children's teachers or workers in a new online world, even when we feel isolated and alone in the midst of a pandemic, and worry for our health and safety or for our job 
and income or for the way of life that we used to know, even in such demanding and unsettling times, we have a source of strength. We don't have to go it alone. We have a source of strength in God. Today in our worship series, we're focusing in particular on the power of God. Normally, when we talk about power in this world, power on a grand scale, it's referring to great military strength or maybe serious financial power that can outspend everyone else around. But of course, that's not the power that Paul is talking about in our scripture text. The power of God in Christ is this love that we've been talking about today. We sometimes like to water down the word love. We make it all seem nice and cozy and pleasant. Well, those are all pretty tame words to describe the raw power of God. The light, wisdom, holiness, power, and glory of God in all its fullness. Living love isn't our mission because it's nice or pleasant. We live the love of Jesus because it is the source of our power as Christians. It is the love of God at work in us, pouring through us connect, uh, to connect us to God and to connect God to a hurting world. It is the love that is wiser than our own, into whose arms we entrust those dearest to us. It's the love that gives us the chance to be a people of compassion and mercy and justice in a world that has so many crying needs. And in those moments when we get out of the way and let God's love in Christ flow through us, then we can do so much more than we could accomplish by ourselves. Together or as individuals, we can grow in courage. We can stand up for those who are being hurt or abused. We can welcome people who have been marginalized. We can push aside our fear of failure, of standing out, of being rejected. Christ dwells in our hearts by faith when we are rooted and grounded in love. Altogether, the word love is used 20 times in the letter to the Ephesians, 10 times as a verb, and 10 times as a noun. Paul really means it. The love that God pours into us is designed to flow from us through concrete expressions of love in our lives. As a church, we've been trying to put this love into action. We have taken the step to become a reconciling congregation, welcoming all people, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity, into the life and leadership of the church. We've committed ourselves to the work of anti-racism, opening ourselves to new learning and to working for change, both in the world and in ourselves. And we've continued to reach out in our community and beyond to meet some of the acute needs around us, be listening for another AFAC food drive being organized in the future. What more might God be calling us to do or be? Our source of strength is in the power of God's love. When we are filled with all the fullness of God, even a global pandemic can't stop us. God's love in Christ is the power we need. It is a source of strength for us. So let's pray for Christ's love to, to take us over, to fill us with the power of God's fullness, to root us and ground us in love. I think we should end this sermon with Paul's own words, a blessing to us that we can all use in days like these. Now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To God 
be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Worship involves giving to God, giving our hearts and giving our resources. So now in our online service, we'd like to take a moment and ask you to be generous. I'm proud to be a part of a church that is investing in changed lives. A great example of this is our Sunday school program. Clarendon offers a variety of different Sunday school classes, ranging from the children's classes, youth group and adult classes. We are kicking off Sunday school for the 2020-2021 year during the next couple of weeks, and I want to highlight a number of the classes that we'll be virtually meeting. We have the Children's Sunday School, Youth Group, the Young Professionals, Faith Link, Good News, Home Builders, Murky Men, Parents Network, and several Bible studies. The Education Committee at Clarendon has been focusing on our children's program, making sure that the children at our church are feeling connected to their friends and to God, all while learning about loving their neighbors and loving those who are different from them and helping those who are in need and struggling. The committee is excited to share our weekly virtual lessons with all the students and we're looking forward to our many Zoom parties throughout the fall. The committee is also focused on sharing information about all of the adult classes that are open for everyone to join throughout the week. 
The church offers a variety of different groups with focuses ranging from families, relationships, and social and environmental justice. If you are interested in joining or learning more about any of these small groups, please reach out or visit the Clarendon UMC website. We are in, in a unique and unprecedented time in history as we are living through a global pandemic and facing injustices and unrest here in the United States. One of the most diff difficult aspects of this time for me has been being so far away from my family back in Minnesota. Not being able to see them or visit has made this time and pandemic even more frightening. However, I have found that being a part of the Sunday school classes and specifically the Monday evening women's Bible study group has given me a time to focus on the Lord and what God's plan is for each of us. Even though it is virtual, it is comforting to come together with brothers and sisters in Christ as we discuss challenges we are facing and how we can work together to overcome them. The money and time that you contribute makes these connections for our congregation possible. Thank you for your giving. In these days of raging fires and racing hearts, may we dig deeply into the rich and verdant soil of our souls to unearth the power firmly planted in each of us by the Holy Spirit. This power rooted and grounded in love is offered freely through our faithfulness to the teachings of Jesus. Let us reflect and renew in his abiding love. Amen. dear friends, go in the strength of God's Spirit, and may the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and evermore. Amen. Amen.